I made use of participant observation in my PhD research into religious education in secondary schools. Um, this research approach, uh, the approach that we took was to spend two weeks in each school site and to take extensive notes using an observation schedule that we devised before the research began. Uh, and we continued to revise that in team meetings as the observations progressed. Participant observation tends to be associated with a methodology called ethnography. Uh, ethnography developed out of anthropology as a discipline, uh, was originally used by sort of field researchers who would go and live with a tribe sometimes for years at a time and study their language, their cult culture, customs, rituals, religion, etc. Um, and there's still a sense that truly ethnographic research requires that kind of long-term in-situ engagement and an attempt to present an insider perspective on the culture that's being studied. Uh, and that's an important consideration for education researchers uh, thinking about using participant observation. If you're observing a class for research purposes, uh, you want to be asking yourself what does this interaction mean to the people who are involved, to the teachers, to the students. And that's quite a different to the approach that you might take to observing if you were a student teacher on placement or a school leader or inspector observing the quality of a lesson. Um, so even though full length um, true ethnographic research might be a little bit out of the reach of uh, a dissertation uh, kind of study because of the, the, the length of time that's involved. Participant observation as a method uh, can still be useful. Uh, what makes this approach distinctive is that it tries to be as naturalistic as possible to capture the normal interactions, the messiness of education as a cultural process. For that reason you do need to spend some time observing, not just uh, to get used to the method, uh, but for your participants to get used to you, uh, ideally to forget that you're even there, uh, though that's never entirely possible. Um, the advantage of this is that you get a sense of uh, what uh, a change, say a new pedagogy or a new approach to assessment feedback looks like when it's embedded in the, all the regular toing and froing of people's lives. Uh, rather than as a sort of isolated, artificial term in a test or a survey. Uh, one of the possibilities though, and I don't say disadvantages because this can be a significant finding in itself, is that sometimes it looks like nothing. Sometimes there just really isn't anything observable uh, that relates to your original research question, or nothing relevant happens for weeks on weeks at a time, or you just find that something else in the classroom, something else that you're observing, seems so much more interesting and so much more pertinent than your original uh, research project. And there are different approaches to participant observation. There are more structured approaches where you could take a very um, heavily defined um, observation schedule where you're observing, say, every 30 seconds how often a particular term is mentioned or how often a particular sort of interaction happens, how many students are writing or talking or whatever. Um, and then there are more unstructured, more naturalistic approaches which allow you to uh, follow the interest and just follow the activity in the classroom. Um, in my own research, the participant observation in RE classes showed the importance of spaces for dialogue that were open-ended where the answers weren't predetermined by the scheme of work or by the teacher, uh, and sometimes as well where there wasn't an attempt to reach any kind of consensus or conclusion at the end of the class. Uh, and these were the spaces that let students talk about their real life experiences of religion, values, beliefs, rather than providing kind of pat answers. And it's really hard to explain an idea like that uh, to someone in an interview or a questionnaire. Um, so participant observation was really useful for picking up those kinds of subtleties in the classroom. Um, to sum up, this approach relies on what the anthropologist Clifford Geertz calls thick description. That is to say, it's concerned with describing an incident from the insider's perspective, capturing as much detail and meaning as possible. Um, it's about observing as if you were a participant. Um, now, obviously, if you're a 35-year-old master's student and you're observing a year one classroom, you're never really going to be one of the five-year-olds in the classroom. Um, but to attempt that kind of sympathetic imagination, um, to attempt to understand the insider's perspective is really what participant observation is about. 
For more information, I'd suggest a look at a short edited volume by Geoffrey Walford called How to Do Educational Ethnography, uh, which really walks you through every step from planning uh, to writing up. Thanks.